In this short video, I'm going to be covering chemical hazards awareness, and it's very specifically based upon the COSH regulations in the UK. So let's get started. I'm going to cover this presentation using the six W's. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically looking at why and what, who, when and where and how. I know the how begins with a H, but there is a W in there. There is a quiz as well with seven questions attached to this presentation and this video, which I'll talk more about towards the end of the slideshow. So in terms of why and what, in the UK, COSH regulations were introduced in 2002. Now during the course of the slideshow I'm going to throw up this quiz symbol that you can see here and that's an indication of where the quiz questions are going to be focusing. Let's look at that why and what a bit more. COSH stands for Control of Substances Hazardous to Health. It's a set of regulations that protect workers from ill health when working with specific substances and materials. What do we mean by substances? Well, these include any form of hazardous material, including liquids, solids, fumes, dusts, vapours, fibres, nanoparticles, and so on. And of course, in terms of hazardous, we know we've covered a few of these in other videos. A hazard is simply something that can cause damage or harm to your health. So here we're looking at damage to lungs, skin, nose, mouth, genes, etc. But what about who? Well, when we look at who, we have to look at employers' responsibilities. There are various aspects that employers need to cover, and these include exposure, control measures, instruction, and procedures. Now, instruction is an interesting one because they have to provide employees with information, instruction, and training around working with hazardous substances. In fact, you could consider this presentation as a chemical hazardous awareness training for your organization. You may even want to use it as a safety moment or a toolbox talk. Let's cover a bit more about employees' responsibilities. We have to look at also surveillance, risk assessments, limits, and also supervision. The most important thing to recognize here that it's not just about employers' responsibilities. Employees also have a responsibility. So what are these? Well, firstly, they have to look at it from a safety perspective, assist their employees, their fellow employees, in creating a safe working environment. And also they need to be making sure that the procedures are followed and put in place to stop accidents and overexposure. We cover PPE a lot in terms of hierarchy of controls in another video and I mentioned that it's the lowest in terms of the desirable option. It's important that employee responsibilities are also focused on PPE and also reporting. But that's not all, there's some more. Employees responsibilities also extend to checking ups uh, or should I say checkups, that's medical checkups when required to, and also to cleaning. They need to make sure that they use cleaning and showering facilities provided by employees in line with official procedures. Again, training. Employees also have a responsibility to keep up to date with the training provided by employers. We've covered the employee responsibilities and also employer responsibilities in terms of who time to look at when and where. I think the best way to describe when and where is always whenever and wherever chemical hazards are involved or chemicals are involved. It's better to be safe than sorry and it's always a good idea to bear that in mind whenever and wherever. But how? Covered this many a time before and we talked about hazards and risks and what the definitions are etc. Let's just say that a hazard is something that has the potential to harm you. A risk is the likelihood of a hazard causing harm. And we know that from previous experiences that this, these definitions can get confusing, but just focus on it in terms of these particular definitions provided. Let's go into the how a little bit more now and talk about, well, how do we actually do it? Again, the risk equation is consequences times likelihood. And when we look at consequences, we're looking at in terms of, from a hazardous perspective, harm to people. So along this here, we have various sort of ranges going from slight health effect injuries to multiple fatalities. Likelihood or probability can go from very unlikely to very likely. So the product of this consequence and likelihood is the risk. 
In terms of how, we need to look at the hierarchy of control measures. How do we actually control the exposure to chemical hazards? Elimination is, of course, the most desirable option, and we go down the range to the least desirable option, which is PPE. I have covered this before in a previous video where we looked at a worked example for hierarchy of control measures, and it might be worthwhile flicking back to that to, to see it. I also created this acronym, which is not really my acronym, but I think many others have used it, which is ERIC P. And this is about eliminate, reduce, isolate, control, and PPE. Let's dive in a bit more on how. Um, and in terms of COSH, there are nine primary hazard symbols relating to COSH. And I'll flick them up here, and you can see the go from a toxic danger warning sign through to corrosive and through to compressed gas. Note the quiz. Uh, symbol here. In terms of identifying hazards and assessing risks from the how perspective, it's important to note that hazards and risks are not limited to substances labelled as hazardous. A bag of flour is a common example. You need to walk around your workplace to make sure there's no exposure to potential harmful substances. And in what way are they harmful to health? What jobs or tasks are you involved with that can lead to exposure, the workplace exposure levels? So we need to think about are there any areas of concern and what would you do or what do you do that involves hazardous substances? How can these cause harm? How can you reduce the risk of harm occurring? And it's always better to try to prevent exposure at source. Most important to note, and I say this all the time, is keeping a copy of the safety data sheet is not a COSH assessment. Now it's quite likely that we have a checklist and you can find the checklist and tools and various other videos and helpful content on our app. The app is safe for working, it's 100% free, available through Apple and through Google Play. And you can also find it on this website, saferworking.com. The app also has access to the quiz and various other quizzes that we've produced. You can find it in the menu, what I call the hamburger menu, as you pull down on the app. Please do visit the app and download it. And if you prefer to just do it on a website, just visit the Academy website, which is www.redriskacademy.com. Thank you.